Hello, we are Nerds of the West. We have just played a absolutely intense game of Dune Arrakis, Dawn of the Fremen. And right now we are gonna give you our thoughts so that you can have an idea of what this game entails and whether or not it is right for you. At the end, we will be ranking it, not based on if one game is better than another, but just if given the opportunity, what we would prefer to play. We put that on our board, we re-rank it at the end of the year on a big stream, because we stream twitch.tv slash Nerds of the West. You can come and join us every single weekend. We, the people, are, I'm Tom. We have a Billy. Hey, how you going? We have a Kai. The spice must flow. And we have a Sean. How you doing? Uh, this is an area control game with so much maths and so much different ways to go, but we will start where I like to always do, with the art. I, not the biggest fan of the art. It does the yeah. job. It does the job. Uh, it, yeah. There is nothing special here. I've, but, yeah. sorry. No, I, same, I don't know, lots of numbers. I don't know if that comes into the art section, but... Well, that's kind of what I was going to say. Yeah, there's nothing like insane going on on the art, but look there's at how wrong. many tokens are on the board right now. If the art was any more <laughs> intense and any more yeah. flowery and any prettier, the really important stuff, which is the numbers, would get washed away in the prettier art, right? Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they had prettier art to start mm. with in some cases, like these yeah. tokens that are just kind of a colour and a person. But that's exactly what you need to know what territory is which, right? It's yep. a nice big chunk of colour. So as much as the art isn't, like, inspiring, I suppose, yeah. it is perfect for the function, I think. Yep. I mean, most amount of art are on these cards. Mm. The card, Yeah, the cards are nice. Show them off. Yeah, mm. so as you can see here... The, the cards are evocative enough, and I guess you're right, that is where they are showing off a few different things. Yeah, um, like, mm. you know, and, yeah, that's good. It, you know, and it's... I like how close it is to the movie. Um, As Captain Perth points out, it's kind of difficult to make a desert look interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, there is, there is some texture point. and things going on. So onto the gameplay, and I'm going to start with the thing that caused us a lot of interesting and I think interest, and the thing that is most interesting about this game is the council phase. The fact that you can yeah. all unanimously vote to change how the game is played. <laughs> um, Fantastic, given the fact that we're on a time crunch, or maybe <laughs> you in game night is on a time crunch, and you can go, cool, this is the final round. You can unanimously vote within the game that this is the final round, and change how your decisions are made because of that. Yeah. The fact that you can make these alliances and change how all battles are going to play from then on just makes all that decision space so much more interesting, because the choice for battles in this game is like, cool, you're not just fighting in this one section, you're fighting everything around it, so choosing where you move and where you fight and where you position is so much more interesting than I've seen in any other area control game. It reminds me a little bit of Rising Sun in the sense that you've got the different armies moving into the similar places, but it is so much more in depth, and the fact that you can't have duplicate tokens means there is always something interesting going on in every space. Even if it's just that this seat all the way up here is like safe because it's further away from everything, it is is interesting and, yeah. and quite crunchy. Well, I just want to jump in. So on the flip side of that though, the council phase I feel also makes all the players not want to give an inch. So mm, it really yeah. puts a lot more emphasis on a solo win because you're sitting there like, yes, I can make this alliance. Yes, we can come up with changing the rules. But if I agree to changing the rules in a way that's going to really detrimentally hurt me, which this is our first game, we didn't really know what was going to affect yeah, us yeah. heaps and what wasn't. But, you know, that's where you're like, no, I don't want to give that away. I want to just veto everything. I just want to play solo. I want to try and win myself. And I kind of like that in the theme because I can see individual Fremen tribes being very much like, we mm. are a part of this group. We have to respect each other. But we're also, I want to win. I want yeah. to be the best tribe, right? So I, I think that was good as well. For that reason. Yeah, I'm curious to see how the council phase would play out in a three-player game. Mm. <laughs> like, I can't see the person on the outside being like, oh, I approve the, the alliance, unless... Yeah. Yeah, you guys can be an alliance, but you need six sieges to win. Yeah. If well, you want me to be going it alone. An idea I had was yeah. bartering to have sieges cost three spice for you instead. Mm. Right, okay. Because so the resource generation was certainly got tough. You, yeah. you could get a yeah. lot of water, which made Chris knives were a little bit easier from fighting, but we started the game with only two food spaces because there is so much modulinus to how the game starts. Another point I love, the fact that you're choosing that modulinus. Mm -hmm. You choose where the rock barriers to stop things are, you choose where the resources are going to be, and then you choose where your people are based on the decisions that everyone has made. From the very start, it is cutthroat. 
I, yep. I don't know if it would happen every game, but I really enjoyed how powerful scavenge cards were. This deck... I thought it was just going to be extra resources, but every time. I think I lost the game because of people pulling clutch cards. <laughs> and not because they were overpowered, but just because they were clutch, and I have no problem with that. Yeah, it was like, yeah. You know, crazy cards in here, but very good. I, I like the scavenge. Yeah, like that shifting... Shifting yeah. rock one I pulled. Yeah. And it was just like, that hey, let you uh, take my that, spice away. I was like, that's the exact thing I need. Yeah. But I was also only as strong as I was because from the first turn, I pulled extra power and the power to fight through rock yeah. But the longer the game goes on as well, the less powerful that deck becomes because the weaker yeah. cards, like gain a water, gain a tooth. I assume there's like a gain of spice. Mm. More common. Cards get cycled. No, they into they, the deck. they 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 shuffle back in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, those ones do Whereas the too. really powerful ones, oh, like yeah, the yeah. raid and the rock wall mm. and the stuff that is like game changing, are gone from the deck. Are yeah. gone from the deck when they're used. So if the game had gone on longer, which unless we had changed the rules yeah. within the game to shorten it, it would have done. That deck would get weaker and weaker and weaker as time went on. It is yeah. definitely a game that needs a calculator. The maths you have to do <laughs> to figure out if you can take a spot. And even then, if you can singularly take a spot, but there's someone who you're not necessarily allied with, and they can swing the, the way of the battle, just feels, adds yeah. so much to that theme of, all right, we're all one tribe, but we're kind of not. Yeah. Like a, a token that you can change the value to and put yep. it on a place, you go, cool, yeah, I'm going to work cool. out this, and then that'll give you, like, you can work it out for all the ones around it or for just the territory, and then you know quickly at a glance, that's what it is, and then you can work out everything around it, we'll streamline yeah. the map side of it. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah. I'm a really big fan of an area control game that says no to dice being their attack and defend. 100%. Yeah. So there, there is so better. much, <laughs> there is a lot of randomness in this game, but it is, Yeah. The, I, I feel the right amount of randomness. The randomness in how many rock barriers are going to go out influences how the game's going to go from the start. The randomness of the different phases possibly happening or possibly not happening, mm. or then some of the randomness being put on one person chooses or you all choose as a, like a group vote means there's, like, because every decision matters when it comes down to where you're going to fight and where you're going to get resources and where you're going to move things, losing one or two things can either matter hugely that you've suddenly not got those choices, or it matters not that much because you've set stuff up in other terms. Like, it's, like, the decision space in this game is so wild that you can't ever know for sure that any of your plans are going to stick, and I... It's hard because this is not a war game, it is an area control game, so it's not supposed to be fair all the time, it's supposed to be interesting choices. Mm. Yeah, I think, I think the level of randomness is, is right. Um, because being, setting up your turn, or trying to set up next turn, for example, by placing your tokens wherever you want to place them, I don't remember the exact circumstances, but I had a case where I was like, cool, I'm going to put this here, and then next um, shipment action, I'll move it here, Therefore, X, Y, and Z will happen, right? And then yeah. shipment didn't happen, and it was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So you got to be careful about not putting all your eggs in one basket and being like, I need to ship these next turn. But also, by not putting your eggs in specific baskets, you suddenly lose two or three well, spaces. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting. I think that there's enough randomness to keep it, keep you on your toes. Mm. You know, otherwise, if I'm doing stuff over here where you guys don't have any direct influence. Nothing can stop me, and I can just do whatever I want. Yeah. So having that little potential for things to go wrong. But balancing it with water debts and being able to be like, all right, this will get me extra resources when I need it, stop fights when I need it, yeah. let me move through enemy spaces when I need it, is a very interesting, once again, more choices to make. Mm. Do you save those water debts? Do you use them to fight later on? Yep. Yeah, the water debts... God, it was annoying, but they're cool. <laughs> <laughs> But damn it. <laughs> um, production quality is great. I, I think yeah. my one criticism might be that these like player cards are literally just thin cardboard where everything else is nice thick cardboard. I would have yeah. liked this. I, I, I don't think it needs recess spaces to put all your tokens in, but it would have been nice to have it be a little bit bigger. But also, it doesn't matter. It's literally just a place to put things. You don't actually need this to exist. No. Yeah. 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 yeah that's only there. It's the, the I am green player. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, it's 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 just standard tokens as opposed to like all these mini games that you see these days. But again, as cool as this game would look at a glance, if there was a thousand minis going to war over here, you would also have no idea what was going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This so, is a, a game where the top down almost helps it work better than minis. So where would you rank it? This is our now oh, of the West ranking board. It's a tough one. We haven't played too many games this year, but we've played a lot of absolute bangers. 
the big comparison for me, obviously it's not direct because it's not the same kind of game, but Dune Imperium is so far the top game for us for the year. Mm -hmm. I am such a fan of worker placement and of um, deck building that I don't see this beating that for me, but that's not because this is necessarily a worse game. I think this is a more intense game than Dune Imperium, but I find Dune Imperium more fun to play. I, I agree, straight away, with everything you just said. Yeah. So I've got nothing more to add. See, I really like games that have a social element, mm. yeah. right? And this put me in the same mind as Spartacus more than yeah. once, where you're discussing things, and this game's a little bit different because the alliances can't be broken once they're set in stone. That's it, which is interesting. I don't know if it would play out differently if you could backstab uh, alliances. But that moment shortly before we did lock in alliances, when it was like, when Billy points out, yeah, you can take that space and I'll support you. At yeah. that point, where it's not set in stone, like we're riding that edge yeah, of like, like, could he betray me? That's where I love yeah. the politics um, of, of a game. So that side of things I enjoy, you know, whereas Dune Imperium doesn't have a lot of player interaction. Yeah. For me, personally, the more I look at these games, it's just that I love these games more. I think this game will either break or be the best based on multiple plays and multiple plays with the same people. There are so many decisions to make that each one counts and that's going to change over the course of multiple games. So for me, I need to play this more, but for now it's going to go above Last Message, but below Arnak because I love Arnak. Uh... This uh, is its kind of a really easy decision for me because I think I've only played one game. But you can also give it a rough out of 10 <laughs> if you're a bit stuck. Well, so the thing is, I've played Reload. That was really good and I'm surprised how low it is. That's like a solid 6 out of 10. Yeah, yeah, true. But there hasn't been any Tower of Madnesses this year yeah. so far. This type of game is my jam. Like, area control is the best game element, hands down, and then mixing in, like, political intrigue with it and stuff is just great. So what'd you give it out of 10? I was scared oh, for, for me, this is like a 9 or 10. Solid. This is like one of the best so area it'd, control it'd be games up here played, with Imperium. but I would want to play it more. Um, Kai? Uh, to be honest, I think I'd rank it on par with Dune Imperium. It just depends on the kind of game... You're in the mood for, I guess. ...that you're in the mood for. You know, if you're in the mood for talking and politics, go this way. If you're not, Dune Imperium. Yep. I would, um, I would rank them on par. Sean? Um, I would put it either level with Lost Ruins Varnak or slightly above. Well, I think that puts it probably above Libertalia. I'm a little bit below, Sean's a little bit below. This is a solid, easily, according to everyone, 8 out of 10. It just comes down to personal preference. Let us know what you think down below. This is obviously a very new game, so we're curious to see how different games play out for different people. I'm very keen to get this back to the table. I'm very keen to play it with the rest of everyone at Nerds. You can catch the rest of our content on twitch.tv slash Nerds of the West or here on YouTube. We upload videos every single week and we're live every single week on a Saturday afternoon. So we hope to see you there and we will catch you next time. <laughs> <laughs>